Hi everyone, Marriott Espresso Press Design. Thank you for stopping by. Welcome. Today a little show and tell and something to hopefully wrap up the wax paper series. I have been working on the craft show so it's getting to where I uh, can't remember what I exactly showed and what I didn't show but if I didn't show this a little treat holder it holds a few tea bags or a couple of Ghirardelli's tea treat bags how stinking cute is this um, a little six-pack Hershey Nugget holder. Uh, the ornament. I bought a sunflower die. Getting closer. Don't love it, but like it better. And I'm curious to see if recycled items might sell. So I did a few book page tea envelopes. So let me just get this out of the way. And today's project, as I was writing last week's posts, I had an idea. I tacked it on to the end of the post and the results were much better than I ever expected. <laughs> so this was the first one and this was from last week the ice emboss the ice embossing on a dark dark um, dark paper. I still have one here. Yeah. Here they are. This was from last week to make metal or ice. And then I thought, wouldn't it be kind of cool maybe if I tried that on a postcard with some dark space? And this is the one, the first one I did. And I really, really liked it. This is semi appropriate for a Christmas postcard. That's actually what I had in mind. And then I was thinking, well, this series kind of began. I was kind of thinking of doing using this wax paper to seal paper, fragile paper, and postcards and things like that. So I found a few more. And this is the, some of the results. That one's beautiful. And then I did it on a few color ones just to see how well it might show up. And then I'm going to um, give you the um, a few tips on how you might use this. And, um, well, let me start with this. Quite some time ago, I saw someone going through an old book and taking images like this and making postcards. And I have this book, but I can't cut it apart. I like it too much. <laughs> Hanover, capital of Lower, Lower Saxony Exhibition City. And the photographs are just... I just can't cut this book up. I bought it to cut it up, but I just can't. So I have a little note in there, too. So finally, Goodwill... Let me find a place. Goodwill finally had some books that I will not mind cutting up. <laughs> um, 
This one is Van Du Mas the Von Du Masters Tales from Within the Walls of America's Oldest Auction House. So this has all kinds of things I won't mind cutting up. Okay, these are a little colonial, but you get the drift, okay? And then they also had this one, and I'm definitely not going to care about saving these. It's not that great quality. Although the nice thing is they aren't glossy. So, as you can see, I finally found a halfway decent books that I won't mind cutting apart and doing something like this technique with. So, I was happy to find those. So then um, the original idea, these are the types of images that I originally had in mind. I have one here ready to go. I just did these on book pages and then I backed it with file folder these definitely have to go under a book for sure. They're curling. And this this time I probably would choose something different to back them with. Um, I don't know, maybe white cardstock, maybe index card, maybe something a little bit thinner because now this has one, two, three layers. It's quite sturdy. <laughs> Definitely like a postcard. So that's all I did was turn the back into a postcard. These ones I stamped on a little bit. But I really think, especially if you have, also if you have some very fragile images, but you still want them in a journal. I was going to try a book page, an old brittle book page. Give that a try. I'm sure you could back it back in front with wax paper and see how that works. So, okay, I have one that's ready to emboss. So I just did these on book pages. That was why I went to Goodwill. I had to get a new um, junk book. I just backed them on book pages. This is Daniel Steele. That was a hardcover. Quite a sturdy book. Had a hard time deconstructing it. And the paper is very pretty thick and nice. And I know it's going to be sturdy. So... That's what I did. I have one ready to emboss and one ready to spread the acrylic so I can show you. And by the way, this one came out the best because this had the thinnest coat of acrylic. And the other thing, um, I have been checking these from the original vignettes. I see no, still see no sign of it separating. So that's good news. So let me get to what else you'll need. So you'll need like these type of embossing folders with some space. This is the one I use on these. Um, these type might work which is basically a border. 
Here's another one with some space. This is the one I used on the postcard, the Christmas one. Here's another border. Here's another one with some empty space. Um, these type. I just um, put this in here this way through my embossing folder and just did an edge. That's another idea. Um, if you have enough space in your embossing folder, you could just try to run it through and do the corners. Two corners, four corners. That would look very pretty for a little piece of ephemera. So I think that's about it. That's what you're going to need. Your image. It helps to have an image with a lot of dark. That's why I went through and looked for these type of images. Um, I'm using... I hope I didn't bump the camera. I'm finding that acrylic medium works really well for this wax paper because it spreads so much easier than glue. And so far I haven't, it, it dries cl pretty clear provided you don't. Like one of these I squirted it out way too much and so it's not as clear as my first one. I'm going to try to avoid that today as I'm demonstrating, but I fi I'm finding this re works really well for this wax paper stuff. So I pretty much switched from using glue to using that. Um, thank you, Ilmar, Ilmarie, Ilmarie, Ilmar, Ilmarie. For your tip on avoiding the um, inkjet printer from smearing, I did add it to the post for the um, bow resin, but I do think it would be worth your while to go get some laser prints to do this technique if you're if you don't want to have smearing of your inkjet. Because first of all, laser prints are beautiful and clear. Just go get a set printed of what you might like to do this with, and then just keep it for keep them for when you want to do it. It's not that expensive, really. Um, I used to go get. I used to go get laser prints for proofing all the time before I got my Epson Echo Tank. But the th and, and you'll avoid the thing that I do not like about them, which is the paper and the glossy finish. But if you're using this technique, you won't have to worry about it. So I think it would be worth your while to do that. So I also came up with I edited these images before I used them. So I came up with a, a 10, I think it's 10 pages. I'm going to put it in a PDF here for you to try. It's two of them I have here. Some of them I split toned because I kind of like that better. Some of them I um, high contrasts. I also thought it might help if I have tried to try to avoid any white. And some of them I high contrast, but um, yeah, these are the type of images I had in mind that you'll typically probably find in a lot of books. So if I have time, I'll do a color one maybe. So that'll be free for you. 
under this video. Kind of a makeup for not having the time to um, do a create with me yet this month. So I think I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Keep bumping this cord. Let me check this. Sorry about that. Okay. I kind kind of found that if I use a card or a paper brush, I can kind of avoid we get something to spread this on. I can kind of avoid um, too much gloss, too much medium on the image. That way I get it nice and smooth. So I'm just going to do that here. And then I have one dry. And then I'm going to emboss. I'm not going to construct the whole thing again. I think everyone pretty much understands how to do a postcard or just take your postcard. Okay, I'm not sure if that's enough. A bit more. Oh, geez, I'm getting a bubble there. Must not have had enough glue under there. Okay, that's good. It's nice and smooth. Yeah, the card works better. And I'm going to try to lay that on there. Keep it as smooth and clear as possible. And then when this was like, I don't know, 95% dry, I ran it through the press. And that's all, you, all there is to it. So there you go. Maybe I might try to smear some more out of there because I kind of see Okay, kind of see that. So that's it, that's it. So, um, yeah, I just trimmed it, waited for it to dry, and I was very patient. I did not run it through anything before it was completely dry. This one is completely dry. I'm going to trim it. <laughs> And um, prayers and thoughts to my Canadian friend. You know who you are. I'm thinking of you. I'm so sorry. So sorry you had that sudden, unexpected medical event. I'm sure that was not what you needed. But I was quite worried and I was thinking of you all day that day before you had your surgery. So I'm going to run this through. So yes, so prayers to you my friend. I hope you're back on your feet in no time. You've been through quite a lot lately. Oh, I would love to do the bird.
but I don't I don't think he'll look good going that way and I don't think he'll show up as much on that lighter side. So I think I'm going to have to refrain from doing the bird. Um, I also kind of wanted to try the oval. But it's generally probably not going to fit the entire oval in the image and I want you to be able to see the as much of the effect as possible so oh if, if I didn't say you can also try using these edger type embossing folders I think these came with the bird and they were just, I don't think I've ever even used them. I don't like them that much. I think I'll probably end up doing this one again. Unless I do the leaves. Um... I don't know. I don't know if it would be appropriate to do fall leaves on a winter photo with obvious snow. So I think I'll just do this one again. <clears throat> so I'll be right back. I'm going to run it through the folder. <clears throat> or run it through the machine. Okay, so I hope everyone is doing great. I've been shopping. My daughter has prom and a couple other major life events <clears> that <throat> she needs some dress clothes for and shoes and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay, let's hope. Oh no, do you know what I did? Oh no. <laughs> okay, I put that in, up. I forgot to flip my image. Okay, I'm gonna have to do this on the other side. What did I do? I forgot to flip, put my image in backwards. I forgot this folder I have to flip. And I hope I'm going to do this right. See, this is what I mean. Oh my gosh. Oh well. <laughs> I guess you'll see a new technique. Sorry about that. I got the deboss on the front. That's terrible. That makes me want to do this video, entire video over again. Let me see if this one's dry. Okay, this one's dry enough. And I'm going to use an image. I'm going to use an image, a folder that I'm sure 
everything. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Okay. Let me choose a folder that I know is going to work. Where's my rose? Let me get this right. go I'm going to do a test <laughs> I'm going to do a test on a piece of paper too sorry yes I know how to use an embossing folder wasn't thinking image set up Okay, got it. Put my image in the right way. And I hope I do this right. Sorry about that. And sorry, I just I put a little table beside me there. That maybe I can. Oh, thank the Lord. Okay, oh, that's beautiful. Probably not the appropriate um, folder, but you get the gist. Let me try to get that. Oh, thankfully that one was dry. <laughs> but that's the type of image I meant. And that, I mean, if you just want to send a postcard at Christmas and do something like that, and really put that in your journal, you're going to wow them, in my humble opinion. And there's the back. And there's the one I screwed up. But with just a thin coat of the acrylic, the image stays nice and clear and you can have all these images and try this out for yourself I think yeah I think it's a nice way to um, wrap up the series because that's what that's kind of how it started one of, one of the as soon as I did the vignettes, one of my first thoughts was um, using that to make postcards and um, keep your fragile paper and be able to keep it in a journal. And that reminds me, I saw that uh, Sharon Hearth posted a lovely comment. Thank you. Um, you're one of the ones that um, helped me fall in love with junk journals. Your uh, blue linen and your med medieval French prayer journals. Absolutely stunning. So thank you for the nice comment. But yes, I'm, I get envious <laughs> because I truly wish I had more time to um, create more books, but 
I just don't. But I do think these little things will help the vignettes, the um, faux resin, and this will help make your journals extra special. I still have my one here sitting here. I didn't even, I wanted to make a travel journal and I haven't even got to that yet. So, okay, there we go. There's the metal, the ice. It, oh boy, don't let me get another idea. You could also go over the top of that with a little silver or a little gold if you wanted to. If you didn't want to leave it ice, even a little pearl, metallic, pearl acrylic, but I don't know if I would take away from the effect of it in particular because it just looks so lovely. So, okay, I hope you have fun doing this and um, I'll put your free images in a PDF in the description. Sorry, didn't have time to uh, get to a colored one, but I was going to do those if I did. But thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time, everyone. Have a great week. And I don't know what we'll do, but we'll do something. Thank you again. Bye.